That's perfect. I'll scrap it in. Thank you. Have a great one. So if you ever have the need for a jumper pack, if you jump a lot of vehicles or whatever, Jump and Carry makes some awesome stuff. This is their 1224. Basically, it can be uh, 24 volt or 12 volt. And so some old machines are 24 volt tractors and some other stuff. So I got this one. It gives me the option. But this thing is a beast. I have jumped a ton of vehicles and equipment in the recent past and I haven't even charged it more than the initial time when I first got it so definitely look at them I got a cover because I like to take care of my stuff take care of your tools they last covers not always the most convenient but it does keep it protected better than nothing so about a foot and a half.
activities. Yeah. All right, so for this this like frame I built for the the new panel, I basically didn't really have a good way to secure it, so I decided to to bolt it to the floor. So we're just gonna basically drill a hole here in the masonry and use one of these uh, redhead tapping bolts. So we'll drill down that far, put it in there, and secure this right there. And then that'll hold uh, nice and sturdy so we can get that frame or that panel mounted and then uh, go from there. So that's what we're going to do right now. That ain't going anywhere.
Rock solid, baby. Perfect. Hi, Bowden. Hi, buddy. Nice scout. Good girl. Alright, so we've got the face inverter, and you're supposed to bolt it to the ground right there and there and there's another one right there and so I don't like having to do that whenever I put concrete anchors in things that have recessed holes it makes it significantly harder to get in there and move it or change it quickly and so the plan is to make a bracket to mount to the outside so that I can bolt the bracket to the converter and then on the outside have a piece of angle here where I can make a hole here on the outside and then drill straight down and mount it externally rather than internally. So that'll be that and plus uh, we're actually going to move the face converter further back that way. I don't really like it next to the water here with the with the drain for the gutters. So we're going to move it away from the water a little bit. Not that it's overly going to have too much of an issue, but water and electricity just aren't friends. So. So this will be the bracket that I'll mount. I'll mount it right there. Drill a couple holes here, a couple holes here, and then we'll mount it to concrete. And we're actually going to mount it to uh, some rubber.
need me to do? I need to do that. Sorry, it's really tight. Is it? Yeah. Alright, hold it. Okay? Alright. Tight? Huh? Tight just a little bit more. Can you do more? How is it? I can tighten that ring towards it, so. Okay, yeah, it's kind of like it needs like a full rotation. Yeah. All right, we'll deal with that when I get out there.
Got me. Okay, we got everything all hooked up. This panel here is the single phase panel that feeds the three phase converter. So this 60 amp breaker right here has both two legs of the three phase that feed down through the cable to right here. So two RPC rotary phase converter, two rotary phase converter. These are the power supply that feed and power the converter that's on the other side of this wall, so on the outside of the shop. And then coming out of the converter is this third line here. This is basically the three wires that give us three phase. It's the, the black, the red, and the blue. And those are coming out of the three phase converter. And obviously that, that green ground wire also comes from the phase converter to the grounding bar. Um, and so I, I could have used larger conduit and gotten maybe everything in one or at least everything in one and then the, everything coming out in another. But this three quarters is what I had. And so I went ahead and used it just because uh, I didn't want to spend. I was trying to keep the cost down and, and do this as affordably as possible. So, And then I also ran a 10 gauge single phase line into the American Rotary phase converter box so that if I want to hook up an outlet out there or I want to run something 110 out there, I've got the wire already run. Currently it's just, you know, sitting in the panel here and it's sitting in the panel out there. But I also spent a bunch of time cleaning up this box. Whoever wired it, wired it wrong because they had the ground circuit on the neutral bus. This is not the main panel here. This panel is actually fed by um, another building. So this is a sub panel. In this sub panel, you don't want to combine your neutral bar and your ground bar. You want them to be separate. And so I fixed that. I ran a new uh, grounding rod that this is grounded to, and so is the panel here. This has got its own ground bar. You can't quite see it. I'll show it to you in a minute. But So the only wire that goes directly from single face panel to the three face panel is this white wire because the American rotary phase converter is what's called a delta system. Essentially, it only has three leads your three hot leads that are fed into whatever power, whatever equipment you are running. And so basically, right like that. The only reason I'll need a neutral is if I decide I wanna install something single phase in this panel. If I do that, then you typically need a neutral. And so I went ahead and ran one from right there through this conduit to the three phase panel. This, red, this black and this red are, are the same as this red and this black. They're just fed down to the rotary phase converter and then back through the converter into this panel. So what the converter does is essentially with three phase, you need three legs, one, two, and three, typically called L1, L2, and L3. And so L1 and L2 are literally just the same lines that are originally fed from your single phase. L3, the blue one, is typically the manufactured line. That is what, that is the reason you have a phase converter. This is how you get the three phase. The rotary phase converter takes phase one, phase two, it generates the L3 or the third leg through the use of an electric motor, a generator essentially is what it turns it into, and a bank of capacitors. And then once you get uh, power fed Back to the three-phase panel, you have one, two, and three legs. And those three legs go to three position breakers that feed whatever the heck you want to run. And so, so, yeah, a lot of work went into getting this thing ready and basically making sure it's all right and then trying to think ahead and trying to figure out what I might want for in the future. But I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of this. Uh, not that everybody needs three-phase. I didn't even know I needed three phase when I got into all this. I literally just 
started getting machines and needed three phase and that's where American Rotary came in. So we're gonna go take a look at the, the, the converter and uh, I'll show you a little bit more about it. All right, here is the American Rotary AI20 rotary phase converter. So it is, I actually moved it away from the uh, downspout probably by like five or six feet just because I felt it'd be safer that way. These are the three conduits coming from the shop. These two are the two coming into the converter. And this one is coming out of the converter back into the shop to the three-phase panel. It is mounted in four places. Bolted here, here, and two on the other side, same exact spots. I used some chunk of a uh, horse stall mat that I had, just some rubber sheet. And I cut some slits and basically bol bolted it down. That'll keep any vibration down. It'll you know, it acts as a rubber isolator. Okay, so this is the inside of the American Rotary Phase Converter. All power shut off, so there's no power coming into this box at all. So, the way it's wired here is number one and number two are the single phase supply that's coming from the single phase box in the shop. So you got the red and the black, and the green is ground. And so those feed right here, red and black. Those are single phase coming in. And then the blue line is the manufactured line. So coming out of the converter, we also have the red and the black, but the blue line is what is manufactured. That is what is being created so that we have that third leg. And so that is essentially the third phase. Now, there is also the ground is coming in, and then there's also a ground going out. So it is grounded on both sides, both in here and in the, the shop panel. Um, so that keeps it safe. Nice thing is it does have this door that comes off. And so initially I was gonna have it facing, I was gonna have it along the side of the shop. Well, there's fins on both sides of the converter that allow airflow up into and around the motor that's in this unit. And I didn't want to block those, and so I put it towards the, the fence here, which doesn't give me much room. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to get in here to work on it. Well, because the door comes off nice and slips, and e it slips right off nice and easy, it made it, you know, a no-brainer that I could stick it right here facing this direction and make sure that it gets proper airflow. But this is a bank of capacitors and electronics to basically even out and make sure that all three phases are getting the proper supply and so I, I don't claim to be an expert on any of this. I, I know only enough to be dangerous, but, uh, but it's really, when you get down to it, it's fairly simple and it's not too hard to do. The American Rotary people, you know, you have questions, you give them a call and they, they tell you exactly how, you know, things should be wired up and if you have problems. I didn't have any problems and so I did call them and a couple, I, couple questions on to make sure I did it right, but... So yeah, that's the American Rotary Phase Converter. This is an AI 20, 20 horsepower rotary phase converter. And so uh, it's weather tight, it's sealed to be outside. Um, I still do plan on making a, a roof over this pad here. Uh, just haven't had a chance to get that done, so. So on the front of the panel here, it has two lights starting light and a single phase power light. The single phase power light tells you that you have single phase in this this panel and it's as long as you have the breaker on it's always going to have single phase there. And so there's two ways to start this for, for me particularly. You can click the start button here or I have a wireless remote that if I click this button see how the start light flickered and the unit is on and running. Fairly quiet, you can still hear me over it. I can either press the, off, the stop here or here. And so this works up to 25 meters and I've got an additional antenna that extends the range by significantly further. I don't have a need for anything past this at the moment. We'll see how it works throughout the shop. Um, and if I need it, I'll hook up that antenna. Okay, so I've got this Baldor three-phase, five-horsepower motor that um, I haven't actually run yet, and I just want to make sure that everything runs properly. 
Um, it is wired correctly for 220 single phase or 223 phase. So basically that is the low voltage single phase. So the motor is wired directly three phase, three wires to this, this breaker here. So when I press the, this, you can hear the motor rotary phase converter turn on out there. Now we have three phase in the panel. So when I flip the breaker for this, because I don't have a cutoff switch, this will uh, turn on, at least we hope. Three phase converters installed, the panel's ready to rock and roll. And the next video should be even more fun. Actually using three phase power. Three phase. Three phase. These two monsters are three phase. So yeah, the next video is basically going to be trying to get some of these machines started up and seeing if they work. We'll do a little work on them and see what, what runs and what doesn't. The three phase converter. Mounted and ready to rock and roll. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Hi guys. Go. Come on, go. Good girl, Nala.